Hey, welcome back everybody. So welcome to my latest version of uh, Solo Wargaming Show Dollar Store Finds. Now, normally when I go to the dollar store, I try to find toys or items, collectibles that can be multi-purpose into our wargaming or hobby. But with the coronavirus and places like my hobby shop and Hobby Lobby closed, more and more I'm going there and I am looking for uh, I am looking for hobby items, things that I can use to actually do the hobby with materials. And luckily, the, the dollar store I have to say is really starting to step up and move into this space. And so that's what this whole uh, version is going to be about today. We're gonna to look at a lot of different things that most of them should be at your dollar store, but they may not be at every one of your dollar stores. So you gotta look around because a few of these I've only found at one of the dollar stores. And when I say dollar store in the United States, I'm talking about Dollar Tree. Uh, I don't know what it's called internationally if you guys have that. But uh, let's just get started. So the first thing that really surprised me that you might not realize I got from the dollar store is this cutting pad. Now, if you, if you shop for these at uh, Hobby Lobby even, they're bigger. They're probably four times the size of this, but they can run you as much as $80. This pad is one buck, and this is very thick material. This is the exact same thickness as what you would get at Hobby Lobby or anywhere else. Now, it's, it's pretty small, but if you buy 40s, for example, and lay them out, you could cover a whole table. And I mean, I don't even know, like I, I saw this once and when I went back there the next day, they were all gone. So keep your eye out on this because this is not, this is not the material that uh, you would get for a placemat. Because every now and then I've bought placemats to use as a cutting pad. But this is actually very, very thick. And I mean, it works great for models. If you are trying to cut up a sprue or something, you can use this. They call them self-healing pads at the hobby store. But the dollar stores are starting to carry these. And like I said, this is quality. You can see me even doing this. It's not wobbling. The other thing they are carrying now are these large glue sticks. You only get five, but I will tell you, I bought a pack of these at Walmart. And I think I may have gotten 12 and they were like $5 for a package. And these are the, the thick glue sticks. So these will go in the larger glue guns that most people use if they're doing terrain or crafting. But you get five of these, and these are actually double size. So you could cut these if you wanted. You'd have 10 of the, the normal size sticks. But these were only $1. And if, you, if you're doing a lot of terrain, you will go through a lot of glue sticks. So to be able to stack up on these, I mean, for 5 bucks, you would get 25 of these sticks which would be almost equivalent to 50 in the normal size. So again, that is an excellent find. And what really shocked me is the dollar store is now carrying real brushes. These are the same type of brushes that you would get at Hobby Lobby. Now, typically with Hobby Lobby, you will get some on sale. Like you could get a pack of 12 for like four bucks. So here you're only getting three for $1, but the good thing is if you buy 12 of these at Hobby Lobby, you may get one of these, one of these, one of these, and then, you know, a bunch of thick, thick, bigger, bigger types, maybe one or two smaller ones. And say you need four of these, which this is kind of standard to the Army Painter uh, Army Brush, right? The Regiment Brush or whatever it's called. But... If I want three of these, I only have to buy three of these packs, which is $3. I don't have to buy three of the packs for five bucks, you know, with a coupon at Hobby Lobby, because normally the packs are $10. So when I say you can get them for five bucks, I'm saying after you use the 40% off coupon. Now, in the past, the dollar store had brushes, but it was stuff like this, right? Which you couldn't use for anything other than maybe dusting some terrain. These aren't even good dry brushes believe it or not. But now you are getting, and this is called, uh, these are called Ma Master's Stroke. This is a round number two brush. Now I will compare that with these brushes, which I got 
the other day. I think I got these at, uh, I want to say Target, because these are kind of new as well. But uh, this is a number five. But I mean, you, say, you can see they have the same type of ferrule, the same type of stem and rod. I mean, for one dollar, you're getting three of these. So I would definitely advise you to uh, keep an eye out for that because that could be a game changer for our hobby. These three things alone, I think, would be good enough to do an episode on to, that would give you some good advice of things you need to start looking for in your hobby show. But I actually have more than those three things. So let me bring another thing up. These might be things you've seen before. But I just want to emphasize them during this time. So this is spackling. If you saw my recent after painting episode where I showed the drop pods that I built, I used this spackling. And I love this stuff. It goes on easy. It dries firm and hard. And it's pre-mixed. The problem is once you open it and start using it, it can dry out pretty quick in the container. I've had to throw away a few containers I just didn't use it all so normally if you open it you want to kind of use the rest of it within a reasonable amount of time but for a dollar you should always keep some of this from the dollar store the next thing I saw at the dollar store and this is this is kind of like in the seasonal stuff where these very interesting bamboo now this is like supposed to be some type of outdoor chime Right? You're supposed to be able to hang this as a chime. But, you know, we don't do that. We don't do chimes here at the Solo War Gaming Show. So, these are going to be taken apart. And these are basically very decorative pieces that you can use in any type of war game or scenario. But, in particular, if you play Vietnam, right, these would definitely come in handy in a Vietnam they would also come in handy in a war in the Pacific. So if you are doing U.S. Marines against uh, the Japanese imperialist forces, something like this is just ideal. I mean, you're just going to get loads and loads of uh, uses that you can get out of these sections of bamboo. Uh, I don't have any particular craft. That I'm planning on using them for at the moment. I just wanted to get them and dissect them, as you see here, because I wanted to get all this string out. I don't really need this string. You might want to save it, but I don't need it. Uh, so we're going to get all this string out, and then what I really liked, what kind of sealed it for me, was the uh, was these shapes here. You know, these kind of, uh, these kind of curved sections. So, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to use these yet, but, uh, I definitely thought it was worth a dollar, just adding it to your, uh, adding it to your, uh, hobby box. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at are these here this is called wood shop and I think it's to make a bird feeder but what I liked about this is and I will see if I was right because sometimes in the, the store you're just looking through the package this is balsa wood yep so this is actually small sheets of balsa wood and this stuff is easy to cut it's easy to work with I love the little pre-squares Obviously, if your hobby stores are open, you can get balsa wood there. Hobby Lobby sells balsa wood. But if your stores are not open, well, here's some pieces of pre-cut balsa wood that you can use in all kinds of hobbies. We all know what kind of hobbies we do with balsa wood. This is kind of a this is kind of a thicker thicker type of wood piece with an angle there for a roof or whatever. Now actually if you bought four of these you could actually buy four of these and then create a roof section or you could go down the center and create maybe some type of colonnade or gondola uh, if you're creative. This is actually some glue. So this is wood glue but it's actually in a little applicator which I really like. I didn't even know that was in there. I didn't see that. 
So that is another dollar store find. The next thing we are going to look at is these Project Select two-piece chip brush sets. Now, other than trying to dry brush a big board, which you could definitely use these for, which I may need to use one for, the real reason I got these is for these hairs here. And if you take a look at these things, this almost looks like, uh, they almost looks like kind of weeds or brush that you can mount on a base with some wood glue and then you can put around some terrain, especially if you have some water terrain, like a river, if you want to model some weeds. And the nice thing, the reason I got this brush in particular is the color. You don't have to paint this at all. It has kind of that brownish, yellowish color of real large overgrown grass. Now, some of these are white, which don't work as well for that because you do have to spray paint those. But these here, you can cut these off just as they are. And you you never even have to uh, you never even have to paint them. They would just make great grass, tall grass for any build you have. But we're not done yet. So I also came across these, and this again is one dollar for this whole package. And these are called wooden stems, which if you are doing any kind of terrain board, okay, this is nothing but little tree trunks. These are literally little interspaced tree trunks, cut down trees. So if you are doing a damaged forest area, maybe World War II, an area that's been bombed out. If you are doing an area in a forest in a role playing game and you need to depict some tree trunks or stumps. If you are building a place and you want to look like a tree has been cut down. I mean, this is this is this is just wonderful. This is. And it's all you will need. I don't think you'd ever really go through all of these unless you're doing a real massive forest type of uh, layout. But, and like I said, they're, they're pretty much in scale, you know, to what you would see uh, at 28 millimeters. And the last thing is this here. And I know you're like, Dino, you don't really lost it now. That's a, that's a doormat. Yes, it is a doormat. And no, it's not a doormat. What this is, is actually going to be a road. And so if I can move this stuff out of the way for now. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. You may have noticed that I had this tank sitting here off camera. And I didn't just bring it here. This is a 148 scale M10 tank destroyer. But it's not sitting there uh, simply... Uh, simply to uh, to show you the cutting mat. This is actually here because I wanted to use it to set the space as to how I would need to cut this to create and I'm sure most of you have already guessed it but th you can use this to create a road section and I really like the way the material on this type of mat already has kind of a, if you really look co closely, it kind of has a grooved uh, appearance about it. All you really need now is to, to paint this brown, spray paint it or paint it brown, and you have a very passable road. Now, what you will want to do is like the middle section with the words is probably not going to be much use to us because... You know, and I don't know, you might be able to spray paint over those if you want, if you want to keep that section. Uh, I haven't tried that yet, but I, I don't see why it would be a problem. But if we line this up, again, we will cut another piece. And this actually cuts pretty straight. Like, it doesn't tend to, to veer off or anything. So... And this is a very long section of road right here. Two of these will probably cover, you know, this is probably, I don't know, this is probably 18 inches. So this is a, would cover a three feet table, two of these sections of road. You know, and you can intersect them, which you probably not want to intersect them like that, but you could cut them. But, uh... Yeah, and then you got, so basically, if we just go by that, 
and we do another section. I think we would have enough to do probably three sections of rope. And I will show these to you when I when I finish spraying them, which I will probably get to before uh, the week is out or the weekend is out. Because I'm anxious to see how they turn out myself. Now this, unfortunately, this would be nice if you could make a corner piece out of here. But it's a little narrow as a row. But uh, who knows? We will see. So right here, you've got three sections of row. And these things can go over a table, up a cliff, around a bend or a curve. I mean, and it's just a... Uh, I don't even know what the material is actually, but it, it's some kind type of uh, some type of uh, pressed pressed material that I just when I saw it I thought it would make an excellent road. I've been uh, going through Paul Davies' Battlefields and Miniatures book, and uh, it just I just I just had a lot of ideals in my head about doing things like roads and rivers and stuff that he mentions in the book. So there's a few more things I saw, but I think most of those you guys are aware of. Uh, that would have been stuff like I, I recently picked up some more uh, wooden popsicle sticks because you can never have too many of those if you're in the crafting. Uh, you know, obviously you can get your white glue, your you can get your uh, super glue. Uh, and there was a few other things, but I think they were they were out of stock. But if they come back in, I will try to point those out to you. So I hope you guys found this useful. I hope you get a chance to pick up some of this stuff because I don't know how long it'll be available. I mean, sometimes the dollar store gets things, uh, you know, that they may only be getting these things because Hobby Lobby and them are closed. So maybe they... They got offered some. Who knows? Anyway, take care, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode of After Painting. God bless. Hey, guys. Welcome to uh, the loot drop for this video. And today we are going to be adding one item from the World of Tank Museum. This is a German tank. I'm not sure if there's an actual description of it. I think it was one of the uh, the German tank destroyers. But this is from the World of Tank Museum. And I did a uh, recent video. If you go to my uh, if you look at my uh, after painting where I was talking about a game called Tide of Iron. Well, these videos are almost perfect scale for Tide of Iron. Now, they do not have a profile for this vehicle in Tide of Iron, so you would have to either proxy it for something else, or you could just about come up with your own profile. Obviously, it has a much heavier gun than the uh, Tiger tank, so that's where you would start. But I thought you might like this, even if you do not play... Uh, Tide of Iron. It's actually these, a lot of these are very popular uh, with collectors from the world of tank. So I hope you guys enjoy that and it will be going into the box. Remember, we are not going to be able to give the loot box away until we reach a thousand subscribers. So please share this video on Facebook and other pages. Just put some kind of link in there and say, hey, there's a pretty cool give giveaway taking place, you know, at this website on the Solo Wargaming Show. You know, subscribe uh, for a chance to win or, you know, I've subscribed. Whatever, just let people know. And then the sooner we get to a 1,000 subscribers, the sooner we will have the big giveaway. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.